Today we're going to be building and testing the V22 Osprey. And uh, I want to do a little bit of a longer, slower video, not as loud, kind of like my older stuff, to skip around the video and get to whatever point you're wanting to watch. I'll put a whole bunch of those chapters in there. <laughs> and uh, otherwise, let's get right into the building. So we're going to start out with the Mark III cockpit here and two passenger modules. Uh, I didn't really need the passenger modules. Uh, looking back on it, I should have made the uh, the next part after the Mark III a full cargo bay there. Uh, that would have done better. I ended up adding a cargo bay later. Um, but I kept one of the passenger modules. Uh, I didn't really need that much Kerbal transport. I actually would have rather had more cargo space connected to that back tail cargo space. But it ended up later being enough to shove some like really cram like they're they're in there tight whenever you like i get the cargo in there <laughs> right now i'm trying to uh get the little like hips that it has around the landing gear <laughs> and uh, i struggled to try to get that shape and eventually i just kind of gave in and just used the uh normal mark one uh like uh tanks you'll see that here in a second I'm trying to get like the right shape i tried fairings here and a bunch of stuff and these just ended up being too big I left them on there right, uh, for right now though because we we're going to build the wing and do some engine testing and that uh the engines the the uh engines and the rotors on this being tilt rotors and everything are, they're just incredibly difficult to get right especially given how heavy this is um right there i'm getting the little part that's above the wings um might put a picture here it's like a little compartment there and what that actually is is it rotates the entire wing uh to be uh, in line with the aircraft it's for transport of the v-22 actually and uh i kind of i kind of it was kind of a half an oversight and then when i actually like found that out it's like oh yeah they they fold uh i can't imagine how hard that would have been if i tr tried to do that <laughs> so <laughs> so i'm glad i left them off um because i already had enough trouble with the tilt rotors and this this is literally five hours of footage all together five or six hours of footage all together at the building and testing of this thing and uh so yeah i already had enough uh a, enough time making a v22 <laughs> uh so here's the uh first rotor that i'm trying to come up with and here i was going for accuracy to the way that the propellers actually look and uh i ran into some problems with that you'll see uh, i won't spoil it <laughs> but um yeah, the uh, propellers kind of taper off. They're very fat at the base, and then they taper off to not really a point, but, you know, just kind of basically how this looks, um, if you've ever seen them. But they are very huge, actually bigger than what this is. So big that the V-22 cannot take off like a normal plane at all. The uh, rotors would actually hit the ground. The propellers would actually hit the ground. And, uh, yeah, you can't, you can't land it like a normal plane. <laughs> uh, you have to be in the helicopter mode. And... Uh, so I'm just testing out the helicopter mode. It's going to be like the hardest part, obviously, because you need enough lift to lift this really fat plane. Like uh, I made it really fat at this point. This thing weighed like 60 tons at this point. Um, to, to you, you need like a lot of thrust to get this off the ground. So I needed to test to make sure I was getting enough. And as you can see, if you know anything about those lift lines, that is not a lot of lift and definitely not enough lift to get this thing off the ground. It's kind of like a bee. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so I, I added some more props to this, adjusted the angles, uh, well, props. They're really just the control surfaces with uh, the uh, deploy uh, hooked up to a cow unit so I can uh, adjust it on the fly, basically. And as you can see here, we got a lot more lift out of these, but it still was not cutting it. Uh, the actual stock propellers give a lot more lift um with this i got pretty pretty close um because i added the extra like a uh, little the second biggest elevons to this and still it it, it did not work <laughs> and i think most of this is because i had no control there and also like i don't think that would have been enough lift long term for those um, so I was still messing around with it, and I decided at this point I was going to completely redo the little hip area, I guess I'll call it, and put some uh, actual landing gear on this, because we're getting closer to the uh, production phase, if you would, like the first like real test iteration of it, and we're still just not getting enough thrust um, to really get this off the ground. Kind of tilted back there for a bit, but 
it's just not cutting it no matter what the angle is no matter what uh, and that's because those are very heavy like very very heavy those parts are for those rotors to like really spin at a high rpm they would work otherwise though so i gave in and went for the actual uh helicopter propeller blades because uh i mean that they're, they're they're made for this <laughs> maybe not the helicopter part and we'll get into that they're not really made for that but they're made for this uh, not the helicopter part, the plane part. They're not made for that. But they are made for the helicopter part. And they excel in that. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too much. So, uh, I decide, I'm like, yeah, that, that's plenty of thrust. We need we need to move off the test stand. Test, test stand. We need to move off the test stand phase of this and actually put the uh, tilt in the tilt rotors. So, this is my first tilt idea. And I don't actually end up tilting with this once. Um, I was just kind of using it to mount the uh, whole uh, engine nacelles there. And uh, we, uh, I don't know if you, you noticed there, but we actually upgraded to the biggest uh, motors. And uh, so they didn't really quite fit the way I wanted them to. So I tinkered with this a lot throughout the entire build. Because um, I really didn't like the way that they looked. They didn't look at all like the actual engine nacelles on the uh, V22. So, uh, because they just did not fit with the Mark 1 part I was using. Um, but I'm tweaking around here, adjusting the deploy angle, uh, with the Cali unit there. Basically, you need that because, uh, when you're in plane mode, you produce progressively, like, like, you have to change your deploy angle there, your angle of attack into the air, progressively, like, higher as you get, uh, faster and faster. Otherwise, like, the angle that this uses for, like, helicopter mode absolutely sucks whenever it switches to uh to plane mode this is my first design of the tail ah I, I hated that tail uh, i struggled with the uh tail segments uh like the little the little uh vertical stabilizers on the side uh were the part that gave me the most hell <laughs> now here i'm just sticking a ton of reaction wheels and don't worry i cut it i cut it down some versions of this actually had no reaction wheels at all but uh, I cut it down because that is unrealistic. And <laughs> I ran into a little bit of a problem there. The rotors bounced all over the place and my game crashed. <laughs> but we locked the rotors and auto strutted everything and uh, went to test out the uh, flying part. And uh, we had a little bit of uneven thrusts. And I think it was because of a... Because of a... I'd adjusted the angle on one of the propeller sides uh, higher than the other, but it was able to even itself out with the uh, variable pitch. But in plane mode, as I was mentioning earlier, these literally started producing reverse thrust to what they were supposed to, no matter where I put the play position. And I think that's because they were trying to adjust for it being a helicopter. <laughs> you don't want your plane to go backwards. Look at that. I was literally going backwards, but it was adjusting for being a vertical helicopter. It's like, oh shit, I'm moving forward. And uh, it, it it's a plane at that point, so it started moving me backwards and producing reverse thrust because these actually move accordingly to what direction you don't want to move in to stabilize the plane. That makes absolutely no sense, but you kind of get what I mean. You can see with the lines, they're producing thrust in the back to compensate for movement in the front. Um, so it took me a while to figure this out and figure a way around it. And I first started like tog toggling the entire like braking system and everything like the uh, uh, not the braking system but the rotor tilt to completely toggle off the controls on this but then I realized that uh, you actually need the control part for uh, plane flight uh, because this thing really like just wanted to stay at this like dead steady angle uh, whenever it was in the uh, whole plane mode and it would not pitch up or down and it would but the angle it would keep at would be pitching down here's a great example just pitch down and stay at that angle and I could not get it to go to a different angle also look how beautiful all those different drag and lift lines are <laughs> it's just <laughs> so many different lines um so here we, we've got the helicopter part working flawlessly like look at that the thing lifted up like it was being levitated by a wizard um, it, beautiful, but, uh, still working on that, uh, forward flat mode. I gave up on the forward flat mode, though, for a bit here, uh, after this, and, because it was just taking too long and taking too much out of me, and this is, like, 
two, three, three crashes of the game in. Not crashes of the plane. Many more crashes of the plane than that. But three computer cl crashes in. <laughs> and uh, I, I was just like, I'm, I'm done with this. Because every time, for some reason, whenever I'm playing Kerbal Space Program, every time I launch a vessel, like it's like a countdown, each time I launch it, I, uh, it gets the game gets a little bit slower and a little bit slower and a little bit slower. Sometimes I can get like this final one in, and the game's so slow I can't even f fly the craft. But most times it'll just go from being tolerably slow to completely crashing altogether. So uh, yeah, I was trying to use up use my time wisely. So I was like, I need to get a clip of me landing on the VAB. So I was going to start trying to land on the VAB here in a minute and. <laughs> Talking about uh, reloading flights and reverting flights, I did a lot of reverting, but I stayed I stayed determined. You'll see, I was very determined to land on the VAB. Here you can see we're having some completely normal uh, wing over oscillations there. Like those are that's completely normal. And then we just tip over. Yeah, it, <laughs> just normal Osprey business, if you ask me. I mean, these things are known for their their reliability, after all. I'll put a picture in here of some of the reliability, but I, I no 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 this at the Osprey. It's really damn cool and, and uh, useful from what I've heard. Heard um, this one maybe not so much. Uh, so you see, we're kind of producing half reverse thrust again and struggling with the forward flight. And this is around the time I started to uh, uh, turn off the uh, controls altogether, the yaw pitch and roll controls on the propellers, because I thought this looked promising because it stopped giving me reverse thrust so I kept adjusting and adjusting and I may have cut out some of the uh, parts where I was using it without the thrust on without the uh, thrust vectoring control I don't know what you call that basically the uh, the thing that helicopters use to control their uh, movement and everything the like a uh, variable blade pitch that would be it um, so here I just gave up on it and started landing on the uh, VAB <laughs> and this went just great there'll be a compilation pop up here in a second of how great it went um but i, I seen i seen this as a learning experience it was very ex inexperienced with helicopters and after this i would say i'm incredibly experienced with helicopters in ksp because i was basically using this as a helicopter and boy i went through the fire and flames of learning how to fly a helicopter <laughs> And the uh, Kerbal Space Program seems to be very, very unforgiving with uh, helicopters. Like, they kind of know how to control themselves and keep themselves steady. But there's no, like, hover button. There's no, like, like with a plane. Uh, like, when I use this as a plane for, like, the eight-hour video that I'm planning to post, by the way, of flying to the North Pole with this thing. Check that out. Uh, there's You can just kind of set the angle and adjust the, the back, uh, like, uh... With this, I adjusted the back elevator uh, to a, a certain deploy angle to keep hold my angle and keep steady flight or like steady uh, uh, steady ascent over time, you know. But with this, with the helicopter, there's no like you can't just set it and have it hover. You have to constantly mess with it to keep it in the hover. It seems like, at least with this thing, I'm sure there's easier ways to do it, but. As you can see, the whole time I've been rambling here, there's been like 20 crashes going on in the background. Uh, there, there's probably been like 30 Kerbals lose their lives and thousands and millions of dollars of damage done to the uh, VAB. But you see, every time it gets a little bit better, I say as I crash into the ground. I, I'm, I'm, I'm landing on top of the VAB. Then I'm on top of the pad. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there little by little. And then eventually, eventually, uh, after doing this knocking one of my landing gear off <laughs> eventually I do find out that slow and steady wins the race and you just need to come in very slow and very steady and then realize you're going off the pad slowly and so then giving it a little bit more throttle so you hover over and scrape your way to the middle of the pad for that great sweet picture of hey I landed on the VAB totally didn't take me 300 tries to do this <laughs> But, uh, I tend to master this actually even more later on in the video, uh, once I switch over to, uh, a different rotor system that you'll see. Um, so here we are taking off from the VAB, and my idea was we would go straight into 
the testing phase of the like this doesn't have weapons on it I didn't want to add like a gunship version of this I want to just do this as like a cargo troop carrier uh, basically and so uh, I decided to do like a like kind of like a paratrooper mission with it you'll see it's just kind of a test of how it really functions also I got the broad idea to add like a strut there to keep the engine steady and uh, it did not want to let me uh, tilt the rotors, so I really struggled. And I finally got the rotors tilted and then adjusted everything, the blade pitch, and panicked a lot. Which I think this is pretty much how every single transition in this video from helicopter to plane flight ends up going. Is really panicking, then emergency switching to helicopter mode to try to save myself. But uh, I eventually kind of get the hang of it. it. It takes a bit. And a, a, like a lot to get the hang of the forward flight, but I realized that you need to have the uh, authority of the blades all the way up rather than completely off. Like you need to have that variable pitch really cranked up to be able to actually uh, fly this in plane mode. And angle them up slightly was what ended up being the secret sauce um, of flying this in airplane mode. I'm not sure if the I'm pretty sure the Osprey's uh, props go full 90 degrees. But uh, it just didn't seem to be feasible to get this to work without angling the uh, thrust in the entire prop sections of holding the cells up at a slight angle. I think it was ended up being like 10 degrees. I ended up going negative 82 or something like that and setting them to that. Uh, but yeah, like 10 degrees up, something like that, ended up being the, the secret sauce. So uh, I decided I was going to fly over to the island and pull off our little mission here and... Uh, as you can see, I was constantly fiddling with the controls and seeing what worked and what didn't. And it turned out that you would get these random, like, oscillations in one direction or the other, like, random pitch overs. And you'd see those engine cells are not steady. They're moving and wiggling. And that's because the, whenever you have something on a node that's, like, uh, on a rotating part, like a robotic part or something, and it's not locked, it, it they love to wiggle around and move and do about everything you don't want them to do. Um, so I added a like key that only toggles locked mode It was two if you download the craft file that will uh, be in the description or uh, my discord actually will be in the description you can get the craft file in the craft file channel there little plug but uh, just spam two cut your engines completely put the brake on and spam two until the nacelles are locked you're falling through the sky by the way the entire time you're doing this but spam two it'll still say servos are locked and yada 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 but just spam it until they don't move anymore <laughs> and uh, then turn your engines on and adjust your pitch to uh, max basically will we'll give you the most speed here you can see we have a Kerbal paratrooping out of the back completely normal shot. pretty cool shot here of the uh, Osprey leaving and uh, I had to do some uh, juggling here of controlling him and his parachuting and controlling uh, the uh, Osprey at the same time but luckily this thing once you actually get it working which obviously you see I didn't have the rotors completely locked here uh, but once you actually get it working um, it's a very steady flyer very 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 steady in fact is actually I actually ended up with it being better in plane mode than it uh, is in helicopter mode which is the exact opposite of what I started with here you can see I have one rotor up and one rotor down at one point but luckily I was able to recover from that so we fly him up into the tower and uh, I always wanted to plant a flag up here but every time I did it I had to revert fly or whatever because I crashed yada yada and uh, I wanted to actually have one to keep on the uh, center there something to target when I wanted to land at the uh, aircraft uh, aircraft the island runway so you can see we are uh, actually coming back here to land and get her Kerbal. I forgot his name. I don't know his name. All of my named Kerbals, Jeb, Bob, Bill, and Valentina, and Tiger. <laughs> That's the one with the black teeth. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're all on missions out at like Duna and stuff right now on Minmus. So uh, we just have these like uh, nameless uh, red shirts basically. And uh, <laughs> play Dream On because he's jumping off of the tower and uh, turns out his parachute wouldn't work twice. So he just landed on his feet, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> he's walking over after landing on his feet, so apparently his knees and hips and ankles are completely fine after dropping like 20 feet there, um, 
but yeah, the cargo ramp uh, works really well for this, actually. We got this little hatch so the uh, curls from the inside crew container can actually get out the back and parachute and stuff. Pretty cool. So I can kind of drop para uh, paratroops now if I wanted to. And uh, here we are closing up the back end. And then we're going to take off in helicopter mode. And away we go. <laughs> I actually, I've tried to get a lot of cinematic shots for this, but I uh, ended up being so focused on actually getting this thing to fly properly and not crashing it that I didn't get many cinematic shots at all. Um, but uh, I definitely saved the cinematic shots and the uh, cool visuals for the 8 hour flight video. Because <laughs> this thing ended up, like I said, being extremely, extremely stable in plane mode. Actually, I left it going and tried to fly it to the VAB here, but... We ran out of fuel so that was the next problem we ran out of fuel so i decided since it was so bad on fuel to swap to electric rotors and uh did a couple of tests with our electric rotors this was actually the like first test i think and i was like this works really well as you can tell me flipping back and stuff and nearly crashing but i got the hang of it and look how uncanny this is it's like it's just like floating there. It's completely just, it's just there. And uh, it really didn't take any effort at all to get this to float. Like this is full throttle. I was just using the blade pitch to uh, to basically hover like this. And so uh, I was like, this, this is pretty nice. And this is the first try, by the way. This is the first time I had it out with the electric rotors. Um, and it, it really, it really lacked the electric rotors. They seem to have more like torque and actually do better than the... Uh, the biggest helicopter motors so you see here I, I had a little bit of trouble but my god was this easier than landing on on there and as you can see i nailed it a lot better than i did with the original landing on the vap with the uh gas gas rotors the the jet fuel rotors the turbo props if you would so um just don't tell anyone it's electric motors it's still a turbo prop just a more advanced one that never runs out of fuel uh, but realistically the length of flights that I end up doing with this and everything uh, they're still feasible with the uh, V-22 um, in real life like I went from the uh, VEB to the North Pole and that ended up being like uh, let me get out my notebook and see because I'm a complete nerd um, it ended up being 2,274,000 2, uh, meters so uh, quite a ways, quite a ways. Um, and the uh, the actual range is at like double that, triple that of the Osprey. So even though it's got infinite fuel, realistically, functionally, especially since you can't time warp with this at all, you can't time warp. By the way, I'm taking off from the uh, VP here. And like I said, I can have the rotors all the way right wide open and just like an actual helicopter. Instead of basically increasing my thrust, I can just turn the... Uh, pitch angle and take off really really cool and uh you'll see i still didn't nail the uh transition maybe you guys can uh, uh improve this a bit when i put it into the uh, uh into the discord and uh, you can download this and try to improve it a little bit over top of my design because like you've seen uh i struggled a little bit like right here <laughs> uh with getting the uh, rotors to lock and everything and then once they locked uh basically i pressed break which completely stops them and then spam two as i was falling from the sky like i explained earlier and then started the rotor spec up adjusted the pitch angle a little bit until you're basically maxed out and uh then took off and original idea was go to the island but what this turned into was basically the longest flight ever this here this clip is uh it's eight hours and change eight eight and a half hours after that clip that you just seen there i left my computer running and uh flew to the north pole because i was like well with this cargo that i have this very special cargo you may have reckon you may actually recognize this truck off it's on duna and minmus now uh this is the uh, uh the rugga truck u2 and this is a version without the grabber arm and without the uh longer wheelbase because i decided to just like squeeze it in there and I had to squeeze the wheels in. You can still see them poking out the back of the uh, little tail ramp there. But I managed to squeeze it in just enough to get it in there. And uh, 
yeah, so I decided to drop it at the North Pole, and that took, uh, since you can't time warp this at all, that took a whopping massive, massive, uh, eight hours of travel. And that's all completely real time, uh, and I'm, I'm going to post the actual video of that. It's like a relaxing, like, a uh, flat montage. Completely real time, left on my computer, going all night. <laughs> With me uh, intervening and adjusting the angle to make sure I have levelish flat while uh, sending a little bit. Um, but we're about to get to the coolest part where I drop the truck out of the back of the plane. Um, I had a lot of fun with that. I, I designed it. I was like, I'm going to have a drug shoot come out and that's going to yank it out of the back of the plane. And it ended up basically working like that. That's what they do with the cargo, at least in the movies, as far as I know. That's what they do. <laughs> So I was like, I'm going to do it with this. So uh, we uh, are about to open it up. Yep. Opening it up. And uh, then I got to find the... Uh, <laughs> I got to go in there and find the little uh, the little docking port that everything's attached to. And then we're going to undock that. First, we're going to pull our rogue, our rogue shoots. Our drogue shoots. And then we're going to undock. And there it goes. Switch to it quickly and deploy the main shoots. Um, after this. There we go. And as you see the Osprey leaving there here at the foggy, foggy North Pole. I absolutely love this. I, I giggled like a little kid whenever I did it. Closing up the tail section, which this thing is not bothered whatsoever by having the uh, tail uh, ramp there open. It is not bothered at all by that. <laughs> the uh, drag doesn't affect the uh, speed whatsoever, it seems like. Um, not really sure why that is, because this thing is a draggy draggy son of a gun to begin with like this thing uh you can probably see in some of the clips when i have the drag lines on it literally has a and that's probably what i'm dealing with right here when i crash because it's coming it's coming would it be my video i say this all the time would it be a smoony chad video if i didn't crash at the end like like is that even one of my videos like i nailed it a couple of videos ago uh like the a10 video i, I nailed that but it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right not to have an explosion at the end of the video when I'm actually just trying to land like butter. But hey, our truck's okay. And isn't that all that really matters? And our Kerbals all look happy. Uh, even though they just like pulled like an eight hour flight uh, in this thing. <laughs> so uh, that's all that matters in the end. If you want to see this entire flight start to finish, all eight hours of it, go check out that video. It should be posted within a day or two of this video depending on how long it takes to upload and god knows it will take a infinity to upload but if you like this video check out my a10 video i'll pop it up on the screen somewhere here basically uh this but with guns and it's not a helicopter really not this at all but check out the discord if you want that the a10 or the v22 here uh if you want those craft files check out the discord i'll be putting them in the craft files channel on there otherwise i am out this took forever <laughs>